Okay, so now that we are at 3,000 subscribers now, let's get back to more reaction requests. And this one is also regard regarding the Disney brain. This one is, I want to say, that this, yeah, this one is about Jungle Fury. And like I said before, Jungle Fury wasn't bad at all. It was just that I, I had liked Genki, Genki Danger a little bit more. But Jungle Fury was not bad compared to everything else that I've that, that I've seen regarding history of Power Rangers. Yeah. And but uh, by the way, I would like to thank each and every last one of y'all for the three thousand. Like you guys have no idea how much that means to me and the Ryder Brothers. And honestly though, that really just says something. That you guys really like me like when we talk about power rangers and anything tokutatsu so if anything else is gonna be you know brought up to me in the near future we're gonna be doing a lot more of this shit because i still love it but i always will love it with that being said let's have a look at this Hello, Internet. I'm the Disney Brain, and a lot has happened since I spent a month plus catching up on JRPGs. But before we eventually break down the end of Beast Morphers, which I have many, many thoughts on, I wanted to make a video focusing entirely on one of my favorite Ranger antagonists in one of my favorite seasons. I know I've talked about Jungle Fury a lot, just in general, so the idea here is to add on to the conversation and not spend too much time repeating stuff you've heard me dig into in my big old season review. Right. So with that said, let's talk about who Jared really is. The first detail about the young man who was almost one of the three chosen guardians is a pretty vital one. To make it to this point, Jared clawed his way to elite student status at the Paishwa Academy, sometimes literally. His fighting style in the beginning, and really all throughout the series, relies on releasing a lifetime's worth of pent-up aggression, and over the course of the series, we get a good sense as to why. But that's kind of an issue here, an issue that Jungle Fury builds on as the story progresses. Master Mao understandably kicks out Jared after the hilarious Where's My Towel incident, but that's really odd timing, isn't it? We know the signs must have always been there with how Jared uses his martial arts to overwhelm and abuse, because in this environment, he's finally able to do so. He's finally able to fight back, something he explicitly refused to do outside of the Paishwa Academy during his formative years, because that's just how he was taught. This brings me to the main point I want to highlight about Jared's upbringing. Despite the fact that he had what should have been a proper outlet for his less than ideal childhood, Nobody actually cared about him all that much. Nobody actually bothered teaching him the right way to handle the stress he was facing. Don basically confirms this when Casey asks him about Jared, since he was the only one to even know superficial information about the man prior to his expulsion. But it goes a little deeper than that. Because despite Don knowing some details, despite Lily being the one most likely to believe Casey's intuition about Jared's humanity, and despite Master Mao knowing even more details, but still feigning blindness to his sociopathic tendencies until episode 1 exactly, nobody but Casey and Camille actually cares. And nobody but Casey in that moment seems to believe that we can teach misguided people good things and make them less misguided. And on top of that, Nobody, but especially not Master Mao, seems to want to look at the big picture here, that in spite of all the really cool things the team learned through a variety of masters and a variety of trials, the system didn't serve Jared in the same beneficial way. Yeah, it just, I, I like, I, that's the one thing that kind of pissed me off when it came to this show. Everything else was able, was teachable, everyone else was able to learn, but when it came down to having someone... Learn from their mistakes and, and, and go from bad to good. That was just out of the question. Like, like, like they try to make it seem like a person who is kind of a, a, a villain, a person who is a villain, can't 
learn from their mistakes and turn to and and and, and, to, and turn to something good. Like they're they're just beyond saving, and that doesn't make any sense because Jared uh, uh, Jared was the most savable person in this the, the, this series because he was going through so much, and it wasn't just him doing it. He was taken over by an evil fucking spirit. So how can you say that he's just beyond help? He's beyond saving. Like, and above, above everything else, he was my favorite in the whole series. Like I said before, I, I look at Jared as, as a dark ranger. I don't look at him as uh, uh, just the, the, the baddie, you know, without any ranger powers. That was his ranger power. He had a zord. Okay, he had a ranger form. That was his ranger form. Yes, it didn't look it didn't look like the others. It a ranger form doesn't have to look like the the main rangers. It doesn't have to. So that's that he is a dark ranger. Call go call me. You know, call for what it is. Say I'm dumb, but but that's how I look at it. He was a dark ranger, and when Casey went to save him, went to turn him back over to good. He needed that because no one else dared to even do that. Even though he was a top student, in spite of Pai Shua usually being great for helping one's personal development, right. it did the opposite for the guy that was almost leading the team in charge of preventing the next great disaster. And instead, they nourished his natural talents while ignoring the clear red flags that would later ensure the next great disaster. Seriously. He's basically Anakin Skywalker, but minus the dubious framing of the Jedi Order in the prequels. So much of Jungle Theory is designed to teach the characters about themselves and each other. And because of that, pretty much every lesson learned and character dynamic established ends up adding a new dimension to the story. Because of this, the writer seemed intentional about presenting Jared as less of a villain and more of a tragedy. And nowhere is that made more clear than in Good Karma, Bad Karma, which makes this season, assuming it wasn't already, very clear in its intentions to forever link Casey and Jared. Because the two of them are the individuals who benefited the most and the least respectively from their season-long systems of self-improvement. In an episode where Casey does what he can to guide a kid struggling with his own morals, Jared is basically being gaslit into thinking, no, actually, all those times you weren't a terrible human being were a mistake. And honestly, it's one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever seen in PR. Even in the now, even with Daishi infecting every iota of his body, the real Jared, the abusive bully with no one to turn to, can still reminisce on these moments and know he did the right thing. It's painfully beautiful to me, because before Daishi got to him, he fully relished his role as the mighty lion, capable of dominating almost all comers. But because of how he reacts to his past, pleading for his memories to be spared, we know it's just a facade masking his inner turmoil. We know he never really thought lashing out against people was correct. We know he could have been saved, should have been saved, long before it got to this point. But because we are at this point, Carnosaur can influence him however he pleases. That hits a bit close to home as far as PR goes. You know, in between B.E. Skinner's beautifully campy physical acting, of which there is plenty. But what makes this episode an even bigger gut punch is how fitting it is that Jared's memories were changed, effectively wiping away a lot of his humanity, because next to nobody else in the show thought it was even there to begin with. Meaning that there's a very good chance that if not for Casey and Camille, that they would have been proven right. We'll get to how Casey and his signature moment caps off the season wonderfully, but first, let's talk about the equally underappreciated Camille. Both yes. Her and Jared follow a proud tradition in Rangers, where choice peons of evil are just as emblematic of humanity as some of the heroes. That's one aspect of PR that has always resonated with me the most. This simple but powerful idea that the opposite side of the conflict can be seen as sympathetic. And yes. In some cases, empathetic. That random monsters like Waspicable and Loyax can prove to be not very monstrous. And villains yeah. like Astronomy can prove on, to be a me... fortunate result of evil and not evil in and of themselves. Right. And then there's Jindrax, who isn't even supposed to have a heart, but I guess bypasses that because Toxica just means that much to him. 
So when I think about the lessons this franchise is meant to impart upon a young audience, I don't think there's a more important one than that. Which is why, unsurprisingly, the seasons I hold up as my favorite tend to understand that idea on some level. But I especially like how it's framed here. Because, unlike the equally lovable Villamax, the power structure at play makes Camille's initial dynamic with Daishi the poster child for toxicity. That's obviously bad, and is presented as such, but the important part here is how Camille, despite technically having more in common with Daishi, resonates a lot more with the human side of him that sneaks out every now and then. Yeah, when it comes to Camille, I was gonna say it like this. She loved her some Jared. Yes, she was uh, she was bad. She was. But she didn't want him to get hurt. Whenever they were going through whenever he was going through his little trials that the dice she gave him, she uh, she was more concerned on whether or not he was going to be okay. Because she knew that, 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 uh, that they were going to put him through the ringer, which they did. And she was afraid of that. that, that, that uh, which she showed her human side when, when it came to that. She always showed her human side when it came to Jared. She was all for Jared. She loved her. She loves her some Jared. So, yeah, those two, they're, they're a great match. They're a great pair. Even though Jared was more of a and uh, because of that spirit he acted more like a dick to her and tried to show his dominance but she still stayed she could have easily said that no i i, I can't do this with you anymore or, or or whatnot when it came down to it but she still stayed with him the part of that she being made to defend her listen to her even care genuinely about her are all spelled out for us when casey sees jared resume full control temporarily and prior to that, Camille comes to understand that even for as loyal as she is, even for as much as she wants to help take over the world initially, she needs to be able to confront her problem head on, even if that means going against the wishes of her superiors. And by doing so, she's granted a major power-up after Daishi himself eventually overthrows his former masters and becomes the Phantom Beast King. So in spite of Carnosaur's actions making Jared even less of an upstanding citizen, Camille's actions keep the real Jared from ever slipping away completely. Right. Which is kind of ironic, since for the longest time, she assumed the real Daishi was finally rewarding her loyalty with affection when it was Jared this entire time. So, her ultimate resolution comes not by way of habituating to her very toxic, very abusive relationship, but by realizing that such a toxic, abusive relationship sucks and she shouldn't have to put up with it, and that the real romance was with the guy who successfully expelled that specific demon from within him. Exactly. The guy who was able to start over, become the person he always wanted to be, because someone finally understood him, and another finally taught him. Which brings us to the Tiger Master himself. I don't want to belabor this point too much by recanting the same old details I've drowned you guys in over the course of some three or four videos. No, tell me! I Shit! I not at least mention it here. Because Casey becoming a master, specifically because he believed in Jared, when yeah. his allies did, is just such a great moment to me, and is also very Star Wars adjacent, unsurprisingly. And it speaks to my previous points about how there was a hole or two in what the Jungle Fury team has taught. Because for as much as they come to understand each other and themselves, there's a clear stopping point when it comes to understanding their enemies. But, you know, maybe there shouldn't be. Maybe people who show signs of growth and humility should be given a chance to be heard. Yeah. To start over. Because maybe that's all they really needed in the first place. All this to say, I think Jared is a vessel for Daishi ends up being one of the most compelling things about this franchise. He's a man that was deemed a lost cause by almost everyone, including the master who trained him. And this not just because he had by that point done a lot of irredeemable things, or because everyone assumed Daishi had won the battle for control, in spite of Casey's pleas to the contrary. Those are all fairly reasonable objections. No, what always kills me about how Jared almost wasn't saved is that nobody knew a single solitary thing about him. Exactly! Not even the master, not even their teacher, their master, knew what Jared went through. And you're, the t you're their teacher. You should be invested in what's going on with them, especially the ones that 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 are causing the problems in in, in your in your school. Those are the one. 
for anybody who understands this, and I, I, I'm going to harp on this, the people who are the bullies, the people who have, you know, all of these issues and problems that really act out are the ones that go through the most shit. And it, and it kills me to know that a lot of these school systems, they don't understand that. And they just ignore these kids and just, oh, well, he's just acting out just because he wants attention. No, he's acting out because he's gone through a lot of shit and you should talk to him. Somebody needs to talk to them. His, his or her parents might not even have the time to even have a conversation with the, with, 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 with the little shit. Like, no one has took in the time. To even know what this person is going through. What this kid is going through. Or what it has gone through. And so because of that. They don't think anybody else is there for them. So they just. Make sure that they're the most dominant. The most powerful one. So that that way they don't need anybody else. They don't have to. Heart, they don't have to. Uh, to, to find uh, uh, comfort. In someone else. They have to find comfort in, in something. You just find comfort in hurting people. Because. He, they've been hurt all this damn time. So when when I look at that, it's, it's just like the, the, that, that is a complete failure on the teacher's part. A complete failure. No one knew what he was struggling with or why he kept struggling with it while learning martial arts. This isn't me blaming them for not knowing, other than Master Mao, obviously, but it was just very telling how that lack of compassion was rooted in a lack of understanding. Whereas, when Wes understood Rancic's story, his first thought was maybe he has a point, and maybe Time Force doesn't as much, at least in the moment. And that really is the big old thesis statement of Jungle Fury from start to finish. The notion that there is more to everyone than just what you're told or what you perceive, and that understanding leads to greater strength. In a season where the former Towel Boy spends a lot of time learning, that was one thing he was able to effectively teach. It's a great thing to remember in times like these, and really all times, and it's a great lesson that a great deal of folks way too old for this show could still really stand to learn. Seriously. So, sorry again, guys, for such a long wait in between videos. No, fuck that. That's good. No, that was good. The season 2 review of Beast Morphers will probably drop once a couple of episodes air stateside, at least. Hopefully the wait for that will be worth it while I throw a few other videos at you in the meantime. And until then, thanks for watching. You're welcome. But yeah, that that was like the main focus point that I enjoyed and that that I really I really got into about Jungle Fairy. It was the whole the idea with Jared and because it was just unfair. Like you you could clearly see what he was going uh, that he was going through shit that he has went through shit, but nobody cared. But yeah, uh, let me know what y'all think down below about this one. Uh, more stuff will be on the way. More content will be on the way. Uh, common writer Kabuto, a uh, history comic Kabuto by Marku Satsu will be, I want to say, coming tomorrow, and um, and something else will be also coming tomorrow. So be ready for that. As such, this has been Master of Sakura, and I'll see y'all again next time. I love y'all. Three thousand subscribers strong. It, uh, we're gonna keep going and keep going and keep going. It don't matter. As such, I'll see you guys later. I love y'all. Take care. Peace.